too that um, one of my favorite Catholic artists, Audrey Assad, um, like came out earlier this year and said that she was uh, deconverted, like stopped practicing actively like three years ago and um, like no longer considers herself a Christian, um, which, you know, while having like a career as like a Christian music artist, and I was like, that's like pretty baller. Like that's kind of tight. I love that for her. I'm super happy for her. Um, I, yeah, you know, um, so I, I like dug out um, one of her songs to, to share this week. Um, kind of, you know, like in honor of her. Um, it's called I Shall Not Want. Um, it's based off this prayer called the Litany of Humility. And I think it's just like a, a good prayer in, in general if you are like kind of service oriented. Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, one of my favorite songs to sing. From the love of my own comfort. Sorry. From the love of my own comfort. From the fear of having nothing. From a life of worldly passion. From a need to be accepted And from the fear of being lonely second song is one that uh, was written um, like uh, in a collaboration online um, and uh, someone else wrote the words I did the music and um, because it's kind of about like a long distance relationship like I've always thought that was kind of cool um, I've played it here before um, it's called half of the moon do you Thank you. 
fly me away like a pair of wings. It's 
Cause it is a blank page. It's all I know. You would, could, should sing professionally. Somebody's told you that before. But uh, you should listen to them. Anyway, uh, so uh, the most spiritual cover I know, I guess, is Dream On by Aerosmith. And these guys were 18 in a neighborhood like this in, on the East Coast in 1970 when they wrote this right out of high school. One of the rhythm guitarists is actually the one who went to Julia. But uh, I do the Time in the Bottle version of Dream On. If anybody wants to sing along, no, nobody knows, the, not everybody admits to knowing every word of that song. It was the, it was up on the ballot to be the class song the year I graduated in 1986. What won though, that's what I voted for, got about 20% of the votes. What won though was uh, Eddie Murphy, My Girl Wants to Party All the Time, was a hit that week. So thank you for that. I would not have remembered that. Okay. Try this without singing. So it's different. I'm very nervous. I'm not the accomplished musician any of you would be. Thank you. 
Since then, I've started doing other covers that uh, I can't play them. I don't use a pick. Uh, I, I'm a non-traditional musician, so I'm trying to, you know, play the notes kind of where and what I can. I always encourage people. That seems to be the, the main stumbling block is uh, people don't pursue music, and everybody should, uh, because they're not good enough or they don't have patience with their own mistakes. And I'm saying just go do it anyway. It connects your brain. It makes you a, a more well-balanced happy person, sleep better, dreams and stuff, and, excuse me, my next song is super short, I promise, it's kind of like a, a Led Zeppelin, a, a battle of Evermore chords with Iron Maiden Staccato, but super soft and super nice, it's called Flags, because uh, when I wrote it, just trying to play this chord, whatever it is, still don't know exactly, uh, F sharp minor 6 or something, uh, is, uh, uh, um, it just seems like, uh, the kind of thing that would represent everybody. So I call it flags, like as in the flags outside the United Nations or United Federation of Planets or whatever. I'm still looking for the Vulcan Embassy. It's around here somewhere. Anyway, there's like two minutes here. So. Venus is, you know, uh, 99, 98 
98% what Earth is. It's just on an 89 degree axis instead of 23.5, which is Earth. Only that almost 90 degree axis could cause the global warming it's been experiencing for billions of years or however long. And every 100 million years or something, the entire surface will go volcanic. And we've managed to send a couple probes there. Five seconds is how long they last because the surface temperature will melt lead in that amount of time. And uh, that just happens to be like really hard to reconcile with the laws of physics. Like what? one in a zillion thing could possibly happen to make that happen I'm talking about it. so it seems intentional and my favorite conspiracy theory is that uh, the venusians were the first sentient species in this solar system you know uh, many uh, or uh, yeah 4.5 billion years since its creation and they invented the dinosaurs and us and all of this has been theater so where are the aliens they've always been here they're just hiding Maybe that's uncomfortable for everybody, but uh, I'm comfortable with it. Thank you. I, 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 I'm looking for the, uh, the Star Trek Starfleet Academy. Uh, it's supposed to be in Sausalito, I think, every time you see a screenshot of Anyway, uh, but uh, here's a, a, a song uh, my friend wrote when we were first in the 90s with these website things, these UFO and I have a website about Pyramids. I've measured the pyramids. There's interesting numbers here. I'll blow everybody's mind really quick. Every archaeological site older than Rome is on the planet is aligned to each other like a soccer ball, only with sacred geometry. And none of these people were supposed to have known each other thousands of years apart. They didn't have a wheel. They didn't have math. They didn't know what the sky was. But there they all are. Look at them on the map. You can't dispute it. A great circle is like the equator, where the circle shares the same center as the Earth as the sphere, or like a line of longitude, there's great circles on interesting angles that have pentagrams connecting Easter Island and Stonehenge and a bunch of other really cool places with blocks as big as this building that we can't move today. And that's one of my side projects that uh, 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 makes so far a million times uh, uh, more discomfort than authentic interest. So uh, you know it's got to be one of my favorite subjects if I keep trying to bring it up. Irregardless. Anyway, but anyway, so this is a song I'm talking to. Written by a friend of mine uh, that I uh, wish I knew what happened to him. I haven't seen him in a while. It's called Alien Wonderland. Thank song has to be. And I have 200 originals, and I'm working on 500 covers, and once you get to a certain point, you can have any cover you want. I haven't planned for 35 years, and I just encourage it to everybody, just please, any five minutes you have a day, play every day. Like uh, Tenacious D says, and we will come back in 10 years and urge you to continue or stop, and then seriously, you will stop. No, don't stop. Everybody, please continue. Writing poetry, painting, making that connection and having to do on a creative level. Maybe the war in Iraq is the only war there ever was. With that, I return the benediction to higher qualified than myself. Thank you. Give it up for Scott, his first performance. <laughs> My favorite factoid while Will is coming up here about Venus is that um, a, a day on Venus is actually longer than a year on Venus because it rotates at such a speed that it, it spins around the sun faster than it actually spins on its own axis. So a uh, day on, and I also think there's another lesson about Venus that I like to think about. And that's that like, it's a reminder of how precious life on earth is because, you know, if you look at Venus and you look at Mars, in some ways both planets are mirrors for Earth, but Venus has just a little bit too much atmosphere, and as a result of that, had kind of a runaway green gas, greenhouse effect. And Mars, on the other hand, had too little atmosphere. 
And as a result of that, it just wasn't able to withstand the coronal mass ejections of the sun, which just kind of blew out its, uh, its internal geological dynamo and, and uh, destroyed any chance for life on Mars. So I thought, I think it's a, kind of an interesting reminder you, just how tenuous we sit. It's like there's a Goldilocks zone that we often think about as like where water can exist on a planet in terms of its distance from its star. But there's also a lot of other Goldilocks zones, like how much atmosphere you need to have, how much of an internal dynamo you need to have. And so Venus is kind of a nice reminder of like just a little bit too much more, a little bit more atmosphere than what we had. And runaway greenhouse ensued and it really heated up and it just goes to show that, you know, life is very tenuous in the universe. Um, while Will's setting up, I want to also thank Will for being part of our kind of, we, you know, we've had this idea to do sort of a spiritual discussion before this, so if you ever want to come by at 6, we'll probably keep doing it where we just, and the first time today was when we did it the first time, but um, it's just kind of a little spiritual discussion where we kind of vaguely talk about, like, why are we here, why, why does the universe exist? we share some of our big existential questions with each other. So Will was a part of that today, and thanks, Will. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me. It was a, it was a good time and a good talk. And there are conversations that we need to keep having and things we need to be keep talking about. of life and the existence of life throughout the omniverse. There, um, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of truth in there. There's a, a reason we have these questions. There's a reason that we seek, and it's all connected. And I must uh, concur, as I always say, uh, and agree with uh, what Scott ended. Uh, oh, my strap will come back on here. Um, what Scott ended with um, is that it is absolutely and eminently important to keep the, the connection to creation, the connection to art and the rhythm of, of the universe. And that uh, the war on art really is like the, the one war. If you think about it, I think there's something that we can view philosophically or logically about this. Everything from a perspective can be art. It's a part of a rhythm and connection. And if you have that emotional connection, if you have that larger than life relationship to composition, to creation, to an image, to vision, to beauty, which can be anything. It can be the tiniest little grain of existence, the tiniest atom and an infinity of nothing. You have something, you have a contrast, you have a rhythm of vibration and a chance for art. And that's all there is. Everything else that comes from that is a perspective I believe of art. Um, I think one of the most precious gifts we have as humans is our artfulness. And if there was anything that I would share with another alien species to, to go to like one of Eli's questions, it would be to embrace the artfulness of life and the creation of all that could be in the universe. I think that if you're a conscious entity, that's one of your responsibilities. Well, there's lots of different kinds of art, lots of different kinds of music. And a lot of it is not necessarily, doesn't necessarily come from people. There's whale song, for example, but there's also star song. And that's a very cool and interesting thing. Like stars and planets have music. They've recorded the turning of, of, the, of the planets and the, and you know, the, the vibration of stars and all that. And it's really neat um, stuff. In fact, when I first started hearing it, I'm like, wow, that sounds kind of a lot like some of my crazy noise music. <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's, 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 it's natural. And um, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to do something in that vein of star song tonight. And if it gets a little too crazy, I'll, I'll tone it back. Um, because sometimes um, star song sounds a bit like, like explosions. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
speaking of alien slash interdimensional slash imaginary entities, angels, whatever you want to call these things. There's one I want to bring up that uh, is a very interesting experience. I don't know if any of you have ever encountered any cosmic dragons. This particular cosmic dragon that I got to meet is this bluish aquatic type creature. And I swear, I have never felt timelessness like this. I have never felt or been in the presence of pure and utter infinity, just pure and utter timelessness, like agelessness. And I felt this on, in absolute, in, with absolute intensity, staring into the eyes of this blue dragon. And the blue dragon came to visit me because of my music. I think it was because of my music. I was playing music like this and having an astral experience. And all of a sudden, the scene turned very aquatic. And there was this, this dragon staring at me. And like I said, it was timelessness. It was, it was a feeling. It was a visceral feeling like I've never felt in any other capacity. There are, there are legends, there are mythologies throughout, you know, all kinds of human cultures that connect us to dragons. Like the dragon, the idea of a dragon or a reptilian kind of a creature is um, a predecessor of ours, even perhaps even a higher entity. Um, you know, there's something about that. There's something about the sentience and, and the great lineage of dragon-like creatures. We are a speck of timelessness. We are a tiny speck of it when we can connect to it. If we think this is even close to all there is, it's, uh, it's not. There are faces in the galaxies. There's life in every black hole. Even water is restricted on this planet. I believe water or the concept of water is, is something that's, uh, that's transcendental, that's metaphysical. That uh, water as we know it, H2O particles, is like, is, is a tesseract of real water, just like we're a tesseract of like, some other beings perhaps. Or we're trapped in three dimensional bodies, but we have higher dimensional consciousness. I believe water is a similar thing. I believe it's a metaphysical power that happens to man itself and fest itself in the way it does in our physical world, but it's something else. to uh, Eli for all he does this, uh, with Alluvium, with the community, for thought, for medicine, for science, for us, for individuals, and for groups. Uh, give, a big, uh, give a big hand to Eli. <laughs> I remember that from like Cub Scouts or right to school. Like, let's give him a big hand, you know, or a round of applause. So, all right, yes, thank you, Eli, for doing this, for putting this on. Thank you, everybody, for your ear and your time. And, um, yeah, continue to keep that art and love and compassion in your life. I think they're all connected. And um, thank you very much for your ear and your time. I can be found at Art for Truth with the number four if you're interested in more of this stuff. So, thanks again to everybody. Maybe so bold while Will is uh, taking down his stuff. I think one of the things is that the first song kind of was reminiscent of is, is the pulsars that have been recorded as having that sound, that kind of very rough bassy sound is something that comes from pulsars, which have interestingly a very, very unique periodicity. So when we sent the Voyager uh, spacecraft out into the universe, we 
there was this gold disc that some of you may have seen the iconic image of that we sent out with it so that theoretically if an alien life form could find encountered Voyager, um, they would find this gold disc. And so when we set out that disc, we had to, we, we tried to give a map of where we are in the universe. And of course, there's no, uh, there's no landmarks um, you know, in, in empty space because the cosmological principle is by definition that no place in space is unique. So what we did is we actually, if you look at that gold disc, it has a map of how to get to the Earth. And the reason, the, the way we showed that was by um, uh, expressing a relative ratio of, the, of basically where the Earth is. And each line on that ratio is, is like based on a certain length. And each of those lines has a certain number of lines in it. And those lines actually represent the periodicity of pulsar. So neutron stars and pulsars that sort of rotate at a certain periodicity generate some of those frequencies, and that's how uh, that's how we told aliens to find the Earth is by delineating each relative line as uh, as our relative distance from each pulsar. And then those lines are made up of little lines which represent the periodicity of each individual pulsar. So if you can know the relative distances. And you know the um, signature of each pulsar, you can figure out where the Earth is, theoretically, if you found Voyager out in space. Um, yeah, great. Interesting. Thank you, man. <laughs> you I know, that it, might have been a really foolish thing for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> it may have been, yeah. I hope not. But <laughs> My favorite factoid about, about Titan um, is that it's the only other place in the solar system that we know has liquid. Mm -hmm. Titan has liquid methane lakes. so. Where it's one of two places in the solar system that you can find a liquid. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. Um, well, EO, let's get out and yeah, yeah, yeah. right. But feel free to ask any questions. Yeah. Okay. So, EO or IO has uh, volcanoes, correct? It's got acid. Yeah, IO is the most volcanic. So, volcano. would that magma be considered a liquid or not? Is that a different um, state of matter? Well, it's a it's heated rock, I guess, but okay. I, I don't know if that counts. Yeah, I'd say yeah, I guess that counts. Although that kind of is that right? Oh well, your, your cell phone's up here too. Oh yeah, I need that. I thought I forgot this, but I guess I left it here during the uh, talk. <laughs> But you can introduce yourself. Give it up for Alan coming up in just a moment here, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I've been coming here for a few months and I'm really drawn to the theater in. What's really, I don't know, what's interesting to me, one of the things that's interesting to me is that uh, Eli's become, started to pose these questions to us. And so it kind of transforms the experience of an open mic to like, okay, what am I going to play and practice in during the week and then taking things out and playing them for folks, see how it goes, you know, the, the things we do when we get out and play open mics and, and then we have these, these questions posed and we can choose how we, uh, how we, how we approach them but we're approaching them through our art and what we bring. And so it's a different experience in terms of what I play and what I want those songs to, uh, to express. Of course, it's very individual what they express. It's all up to you. But uh, when I, I, was, I was struck this evening when Eli posed the question, especially the second question about if other dimensional entities, aliens, uh, what have you, are among us here on this planet, what are they here for? And the only answer I have is that they're seekers. And uh, they're seeking what, what they're seeking, I have no idea. But uh, I realized I've been a seeker too for much of my life, and so I'm gonna start off with kind of an origin story. This one's not especially a, a happy one, but it's, it's kind of my story. It's called Ghost of a Rambler. Yeah. 
something broke his mom pot. He had to find his way along. Often with others who were seekers too. Often with those who broke the bones. Tell the world you think he's crazy. Tell the world you think he's cursed. He won't be back this way tomorrow. Just as well to think the worst. He didn't grow up like his pot. His path blasted with his faults. Most of the time there was no mama. Somehow drift the man evolved. Drifter doesn't choose to ramble. It's so hard to come to this. One can't settle among others when it seems clear that they don't fit. So tell the ones who think he's crazy. Tell the ones who say he's cursed. He won't be back this way tomorrow. It's just as well to think the worst. This is where the light works. Sometimes it lives to feel strange. We're not quite sure about this man. Sometimes it lives in burning bridges. What was promised turned to sand. Listen. the conventions and that can be a pretty lonely place to be you know when we're uh, when we're on the path to try to find that meaning then it can be a very individual path and sometimes we find a lot of commonality and sometimes we're out there kind of on our own so uh, anyway which brings me to this next song I haven't played it for a long time let's see if I can pull it off first let me take this capo off this one I wrote called Cut to the Bone, and it speaks to the path of uh, being a seeker throughout life, you know, kind of what I became through my midlife, portion of my life anyway, and uh, so cut, cut to the Bone. Feel the wind Your appearance dreams were not for you. You 
you've kept your dreams alive Though it makes you seem a fool Slipping from your houses Your empty streets Defying the sun The moon, the wind, the rain The comfort of the trees And you look to then you practice it You drag me all night long Spend years on seven fruit Though your friends say you're just fine Wanting the water Inside the storm Chasing rainbow, seeing colors, not to go. Looking for ecstasy inside the dance. And believe you'll find it, it will only take a chance. Awake at night, 3 32. First part is her, but you wonder, does she ever think of you? Ghost coloring inside your eyes. You'll get to sleep now till the morning's brief, and none of you survive. And you trust there's more than memories you can't put on her hands. There's a getting of the wisdom, there's a music, there's a quest to find. Chasing rainbows, seeking colors, not to go. Looking for eggs to see inside the days. And we need to find it in your lonely tiny chance. Experiences anyway. Uh, had conversations with dragonflies, manifested rainbows and tantric ceremonies. Just been taken to other states of being many, many a time. So you know, to me, those experiences. If you like, it's that uh, rattlesnake song. Oh, dope! Yeah, sure. Okay. Have fun with it. <laughs> I'm going to slow it down. So. Uh, Anyway, I've, I, you know, I've, I've had many supernatural experiences, and I share them sometimes with people, and sometimes people kind of, you know, cock their head a little bit funny. And everybody, like I said, we're, we're just all individuals, and those of us who are seekers recognize that sometimes we do have experiences that people who are trying to live within some sense of norms may not uh, either experience or acknowledge if they do experience. So I don't know if those are real, any more real than my experience of them but uh, it's just kind of the way it is but we had this experience out at our home we live about 14 miles out in the country and uh, my partner walked out the door a couple of weeks ago and there was a baby rattlesnake sitting right outside the front steps so that was uh, that was quite a to do and I wrote a little bit of song about it it's called baby rattler and I've just been learning it in fact I should have brought my lyrics up here and may get lost but, uh, you know, actually, if somebody wouldn't mind, it's in the front pocket there. Just in case I get lost, I don't want to ruin the experience. I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. But when you're listening to a song and somebody's fumbling around, so it should be the very top song. Maybe and uh, sometimes, sometimes it can get in the way of experiencing songs, even when you feel like, oh, it's totally okay. Thank you so much, Beck. Set this up here. So a friend of mine who plays mandolin with me suggested that I uh, that I play it slower. Let's see how that goes.
Well, baby, right her by our front door, she put it in the bucket, wasn't there no more. Wrangled that snake, took it over the hill, hunting that rattlers living there still. Rattlesnake, rattlesnake, don't come around if you don't want to rest in the burning ground. She took that rattler miles from town, said, best stay here, don't want you found. Well, a week went by, there's a snake again, that rattler's back, ours got a twin of Snake don't come around if you don't want to rest in the burning ground. Well, call to the party, come here quick. It's rattlers back, better get your stick. Mm -hmm. Every rattler comes, I'm not taking a rest. If there's another, that could be a nest. Mm -hmm. Rattlesnake, rattlesnake, don't come around if you don't want to rest in the burning ground. seen the first rattlesnake and she she had a lot of experience with snakes and she looked at it and she confirmed that's a diamondback rattle so we put up a sign up there in the front yard and you know kind of warning people be careful don't step on the baby snakes you know my, my, my partner said are you protecting the snakes or protecting people and I, well both but anyway we put that sign up there and then that second railer came and my partner wrangled it, she, she has this long stick, and she wrangled it into a bucket and took it away again. And she sent it off, she sent a photo of it, she took a photo of it that time, and she sent it off to a friend of hers who lives up in Corvallis, who very experienced in herpetology, and her friend sends an email back and says, 
That's a pretty cool snake there. It looks a lot like a diamondback rattler, but that happens to be a gopher snake. So it wasn't a rattler, but for a week and a half, we believed it was a rattler. People who walked up to our door believed it was a rattler. People who didn't walk, there were people who didn't walk up to our front door. They walked around the other way, <laughs> come in the door the other way. So our experience of it as a rattlesnake, as a baby rattler, was real. Whether or not it turned out to be whatever, you know, whatever it is, and we still don't know for sure because the snake, well, my partner called it off a couple of miles and hasn't made it back a third time yet. And that's it. Thank you. So I think we got me and then Victor and then Sage, if you want to do one. Or I'd love to, for you to share some poetry. We do have a list. Yeah. So, and then are there other folks who want to perform who aren't on the list yet? Yeah, please. Okay. When, when, well, we got, we got plenty of time, but do you have a preference of when you'd like to go since we're new here? You go whenever you'd like? Oh, uh, I'll just wait until I'll just go after the stage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I think I'll just do my songs from here because um, I'm going to do two songs and then I'm going to tell a story. So then it'll be me and then Victor and then. A couple of people mentioned uh, William Shatner. Um, so he played the Wizard of Oz in an animated movie. And um, I'm in a band called Tobias the Owl, and we, we gave a song to the movie, and it was on the soundtrack, and it was in the movie. And I played uh, Munchkin, and I was just like right behind Munchkin in the movie. Um, and so anyways, this is like the song that we used for the, the William Shatner movie, where I, I played Munchkin and the Wizard of Oz. When was that? 2016, 2017. Well, there was never a time, you know. Always been years on.
I'm just a 
waste of your time So I don't usually do this, but I'm going to actually share something that's just more of a story. Um, this is difficult to share, but um, River left, but River often tells stories up here, uh, which are just her own personal stories, and so I'm, I'm kind of motivated by that. Um, so I often sort of you know, think that we should look to the universe for answers as some people have referenced that we're sort of seekers here at Alluvian, and that we seek the truth, and I don't have any answers. But as a, a physicist, um, and as somebody who works in the field of physics, um, I feel like looking to the universe is a good thing to do. But sometimes I'm reminded that in some regards that's a fairly sterile way to perceive reality, because it does take kind of emotion and spirituality and soul kind of out of the lens in some, in some ways. I still feel like I adhere to that perspective quite um, assiduously. But um, I had a, I often, you know, look out at the universe not realizing that there are still secrets in my own brain that I haven't yet unlocked. Um, so uh, I want to thank Sage for kind of motivating me to tell this story. Um, I've been through kind of a rough, a rough little little period, and going through this time period and this this uh, bit of a difficult time period, a bit of tribula tribulation, brought up some memories that I hadn't acknowledged out out loud, and I. Uh, I had, a, I had a bad thing happen to me when I was a kid. And um, the thing that I went through recently uh, caused me to relive it a little bit. Sorry. 
No. I'm really sorry. I apologize. No, it's, no, it's, 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 you are more than okay. This is, this is, this is a safe place for you to do this. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't, I don't even need to know, like, what's going on. And I'm just so thankful that you trusted us so much. Is that back? Is that back? Yeah, that's back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry. And, and no, I'm sorry. no, thank you so much for your presence and, and for being here. Yeah. Can I, can I put a hand on you? Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. I wanted to tell the story because I thought I had learned something. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's okay. It's okay. All right. All right. Do you want to take a minute? To yeah. No, let's bring, let's bring Victor up here. Victor's the next performer. Everybody give it up for Victor. <laughs> no, so, no, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Uh, would you like me to get you some water? No, I'm okay. You should have some water. Bring him to him. I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you, thank you. I apologize. You. I didn't think I would do that. <laughs> Let's get Victor up here, everyone. Victor's a really great musician. And um, I, the first time I saw him play here, I was really blown away. Thank you, Eli. You sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I can, okay. I can run sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, it happens. Yeah, it happens. Uh, Alan, do you want to run sound for just a happens second? It happens to all of us. Or, 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 do you want to run sound for just a second? All you have to do is turn the gate up here. Do you want to run sound, Will? Yeah, yeah. Or Alan, yeah. whoever wants to. I'm just going to take a break and get some water. Okay, I'm sorry. I, 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 this is really unprofessional, and I really want to apologize. If we never do this in open mic. It's just, yeah, so, That's yeah. what open mics are for. <laughs> take care, Eli. To pass a pickup this time. Oh, okay, yeah. Testing one, two, one, two. Sisters, I think they're still doing that. And, uh, and I ended up meeting Dan Navarro at this camp uh, called Summer Songs down in Cambria, beautiful place. It's a great camp to go to. And um, 
And I'm sure he's done everything well with this song appearing in so many movies. And I was looking for a cover tune to kind of work on this winter as I really was just having kind of a dry spell of writing. And uh, kept running through some stuff and there's stuff that works for me and stuff that doesn't. And this is the first time I'm trying to play it so you can let me know if it works for me or not.
last time I went to songwriting camp, I was reminded how much my tolerance for large groups of people is very limited. <laughs> and I got very cranky staying in rooms with other people and just, just people, people everywhere. Uh, and I was ready to leave and just say to hell with all this stuff. But there were some great songwriters and just some great little workshops we were doing. And at one point, um, there was a workshop uh, to just go out and just start working on a song. And I went out and I sat on this piece of concrete and I looked at this wood pile. And I thought, well, I like to start a lot of songs just from what I look around. A lot of the songs I've written in the past 15 years are start with pieces of my house from where I'm writing from. And I was looking at this wood pile, and I didn't practice this song, but this was inspired by a rattlesnake song. And uh, so I'm gonna try this, and we're gonna see if it's gonna work. And I started on it, and it, I just wasn't really happy with it. And at one point, I, I went up to one of the other people that was there as an instructor, and I said, uh, hey, would you help me work on this song, because I'm stuck, and I normally don't work with other people. Um, and he said, sure. So we went out and we just kind of nailed it down and, and he came up with uh, part of it. And it's a song called Rattlesnake. <laughs> Just try to leave him be. Born and strong in him, now that little hole by the back porch light. But I don't think they want to bother me. And there's a lot of danger that I can't see. Some will come for you, some will come for me. Thank you. 
going to? We're doing three? Yeah, let's do another one. You guys want to hear one more? Yeah. How can people find your music online? Too? They can find my music online at victordaroche.com. You can also look up my old band, Boxcar Figaro. And uh, we've got a couple of albums. And I wasn't quite, well, I did one more song in practice. This is a cautionary tale inspired by people I know. Kind of many people I know. Thank you. 